We have now installed all the sending units necessary for the 3-in-1 gauge. We have the pressure sensor for the boost, the pressure sensor for fuel pressure, and the exhaust temperature as well. What we're going to do is we're going to take the three lines that, from the harnesses that we have, run them through the firewall so we can easily connect them to the gauge itself. We're going to first put the wires for the EGT probe through. Next, we're going to do the fuel pressure. Finally, we're going to do the boost pressure. Now that we have them through the grommet in the cabin, we're going to go into the cabin and pull them all the way through so we can run them up to the gauge itself. We're now ready to connect the harnesses to the gauge. We're now ready to connect our 3-in-1 gauge to our fuse box. We have a red wire which goes directly to a constant 12-volt source. You can connect it right directly to the positive side of the battery, making sure that there's a fuse within 6 inches of the battery itself or you can connect it to the fuse box at any constant 12 volt source using an ADA circuit, which is how we're going to do it today. You also have a white wire which connects to an ignition switched voltage that generally you can connect right to like the radio fuse or any other source that turns on and off with the key itself. We also have a black ground wire which you can connect to any unpainted metal surface underneath the dash, like a metal bracket holding the dash up. What we have here is we have this red wire it's coming from our 3-in-1 gauge up on the dash. We're going to route it around to the fuse box itself. We have our ADA circuit that comes equipped with the crimp on connector. Push on the wire and simply crimp it. We've already done this process with our white wire. Now that we have our ADA circuits connected to the wires, you want to go ahead and find a source. The easiest way to do that is with a multimeter. Turn the multimeter onto voltage, take the black lead, go to a good ground source, and take the red lead and touch the fuses. You want to see 12 volts appear on the multimeter itself. You'll notice that there is a couple fuses that have 12 volts. And then there's some fuses that don't have any voltage. We're going to be using this 10 amp fuse here. It shows 12.15 when connected to the multimeter. That's the one that we're going to connect our red wire to. Over here, we have a fuse that is showing zero voltage when the key is off. When we go ahead and turn on the key, you'll see that the voltage will go up to 12, which is making it an ignition hot source. This 10 amp fuse here is what we're going to be using for our switch 12 volt source with the white wire. What we're going to do is turn off the key from the vehicle and remove our fuses from the fuse box. Simply pull the 10 amp fuse out for the constant 12 volt source. Take the red wire, push the 10 amp fuse you've removed from the fuse box into the ADA circuit itself. There's an open port available on the ADA circuit. Make sure it's pushed in all the way. Simply reinstall the ADA circuit into the open location on the fuse box. Do the same step for our our switched source for the white wire. Now that we have the power and the switched source connected to the fuse box, we're going to run our ground wire. You can connect it to any good ground source underneath the dash, usually a main bracket for the dash assembly is good. We're going to connect it to this bolt right here. Simply remove the bolt.
Now that we have our ground connected, we are ready to finish connecting our gauge to the vehicle itself. We're now getting ready to install our gauge mounting pod onto our A-pillar trim here in our truck. What we're going to do is we're going to remove these little covers on the grab handle itself. Once we have the covers out, you can take your 8mm wrench and remove the bolts that hold the grab handle on. Now that we have our grab handle removed, we can go ahead and mount up our single pillar pod. We're going to put it right down here in place, kind of line it up with the grab handle mounting opening. When that's lined up, you can go ahead and put your grab handle back in place. And reinstall your screws. Now that we have our grab handle back in place, we're ready to root the wires up to the pod itself. You can pull them through. Reinstall your weather stripping. So the trim caps. We've already ran the wires for a 3 in 1 pressure combo gauge through the firewall up to our gauge mounting pod. We're going to be connecting them to the back of our gauge. The upper left is going to be the black power connection. Upper right is going to be the black boost connection. Lower left is going to be the yellow EGT connection. Lower right is going to be the black fuel pressure connection. We're going to plug all the plugs in. and then secure a gauge into our mounting pod itself. When we turn on the key, you're going to notice there's, that there's going to be a startup sequence. You can then push the button on the front of the gauge in order to change the color. Once you get to your desired color, when you shut it off, you're going to notice that there's going to be a shutdown sequence. When you turn it back on, it's going to do its startup sequence again, and then remember the color it was last set on. We're now ready to start the vehicle and test the operation of the unit itself. We've now completed the installation of our 3-in-1 pressure combo gauge. If you have any questions, please contact us on our website at www.glowshipdirect.com.